class and thank you for attending our lesson for today. So for this meeting, I'm going to tackle your lesson 2, the superficial and cutaneous mycosis. So we're done with your introduction to mycology. This time, we're going to tackle the different fungal diseases. And the term used to describe fungal diseases class is the word mycosis. So if asked what is the definition of mycosis, these are the diseases caused by fungi. And for this time, we're going to tackle the superficial and cutaneous ones. So the fungi that belongs to, the, to this group or the fungi that causes uh, mycosis in this group is your dermatophytes. Now, dermatophytes class are the least invasive. When you say least invasive, invasive they do not spread spread uh, fast in our body. Hindi yung katulad ng ibang sakit, if you could compare it with other sickness, that once you have it on a single location, it can spread fast or almost to the entire body. Now, they are usually adapted class to the keratinized outer layer of the skin. So, let's have a review nga class. I'll ask a question. If you still remember, what are the three layers of the skin? So, what are the three layers of the skin? So, to answer this class, yung three layers of the skin are the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypo. Dermis. Now, take note, class, that this group of fungi would only affect, they would only affect the epidermal layer or the epidermis layer. They are the ones that cause the most prevalent mycosis and they are acquired by contact with contaminated soil or with infected animals or humans. So you need to be careful, class, if you are in touch or if you have contact with an infected fellow human with this type of disorder because there is a possibility that you could acquire them. Now, dermatophytosis class are, are slow, slowly progressive eruptions of the skin and its appendages. Although often unsightly, they are not typically painful or not life-threatening. Now, itong mga mycosis na to caused by dermatophytes or your dermatophytosis class, the thing you need to remember about them is that they are not typically painful, nor are they life-threatening. But the problem with this is that they are unsightly. When you say unsightly, they are not good to look out, or they are they are not aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. That is why uh, most people that would have this type of infection or fungal infection would ask, uh, would just visit the dermatologist to have it removed. But if you do not have any financial capability to remove them, class, they are usually not life-threatening and nor are they painful. You just let them be. Hiyaan nyo lang sila. But if you have the capability to have them removed, much better. Now, the main reason why we treat them because of their unsightly appearance. So I mentioned that already. Now, the manifestations of dermatophytosis class would vary depending on the site of infection and the vigor of the host response. So take note of this. Manifestations, class, when you say manifestations, the signs and the symptoms would vary depending on the site of inf infection and the vigor. When we say vigor of the host response, we're talking about here the activeness, the activeness of the immune system of the host. If you have, if you are, let's say you have, you are HIV positive. Pag HIV positive, ka, class, you're immunocompromised. And if you're immunocompromised, expect that the signs and symptoms would be worse. But take note, class, that the most common symptom or sign is that they would have erythema or the redness of the skin, followed by induration, itching, and even scaling. 
the most familiar name associated with dermatophytes class is ringworm. Kaya siya tinawag na ringworm, ringworm. It's called a ringworm because there is the annular shape of the advancing edge of this cutaneous infection. So, if, pag nakita nyo siya, class pabilog siya. There's like a ring. Uh, this is a ring type infection, skin infection. Now, what are the two types of dermatophytes? The first one is the superficial mycosis which would affect the epidermis, and the cutaneous mycosis, which would affect the dermis. So what are the superficial mycosis agents? So these are the different fungi class. So for superficial mycosis agent, we have the Malassezia species, the Hortea winnecki, the Trichosporon species, the Pedrea hortei. While for the cutaneous mycosis, we have the Microsporum species, Trichopyton species and your epidermo, epidermophyton flocosum. So do take note of the two types of dermatophytes, the superficial and cutaneous, and their corresponding fungi. Again, if it's superficial, Malassezia, Hortea, Trichosporon, Pedrea. If it's cutaneous, Microsporum, Trichophyton, and Epidermophyton. Now, let's tackle the one that would affect the epidermis the most, the superficial mycosis. Under this, we have the Malassezia species. The Malassezia species class, when you view this micros microscopically, these are fungi that would appear as tight clusters of spherical yeast-like cells, resembling a spaghetti with meatball appearance. Pakitandaan class, if it's a spaghetti with meatball appearance fungi, it's your Malassezia species. So, ayan siya. So, this is the appearance of your Malassezia wherein it has spherical, spherical yeast in a tight, in a tight cluster. From the appearance class, di ba, yung mga yeast cells niya are in a tight cluster. And there are certain uh, hyphae that would make it look like a spaghetti class. Now, the mycosis it causes is class. The mycosis it causes, it's the pityriasis, also known as your tinea versicolor. So, known siya as pityriasis versicolor, or it can also be called tinea versicolor. Pityriasis versicolor or tinea versicolor class is a very common superficial fungal infection of the skin. It is characterized by discrete patches of either hypopigmentation from the word or from the prefix hypo, meaning decrease. There is a decreased pigment or color of the skin or hyperpigmentation, increase in skin pigmentation, especially on the skin of the torso and upper arm. So pag tinignan mo to, class, ito yung sinasabi nila sa Tagalog na parang balat. May balat ka sa puwet, may balat ka sa likod. So, this is the, in, in Tagalog, class, yan yung sinasabi nilang balat or parang birthmark mo daw na pagkapanganak. But in reality, this is a type of mycosal infection or mycosis that is known as your pityriasis versicolor or tinea versicolor. If you take a look, this is a case of hypo pigmented. Yung mga patches dyan, those are hypopigmented patches of the skin. Usually sa torso, sa upper arms, something like that. Now, there are currently 14 recognized species of Malassezia, but the mass majority of uh, cases of pityriasis versicular are caused by the following class. Malassezia globose, Malassezia furfur, and Malassezia sympodialis. So, take note of the three that are known to cause the majority of pityriasis versicolor glass, globose, furfur, and sympodialysis. Now, let's go to your Hortea wernicki. Now, Hortea wernicki class is a fungi that would appear as brown to dark olivaceous septate hyphal element and numerous two-celled pale brown cylindrical to spindle-shaped Yeast like cells that would taper toward the end to form an annelid. So, ganyan ang itsura na. In, if you use uh, a different type of stained glass, they would appear as brown to dark. But in this one, gumamit, this is this the, the stain or the mount here uses your 
lactophenol cotton blue. Sa LPCB class, take note of their appearance. They appear as cylindrical. So, pasok sa cylindrical. With spindle yeast like spindle-shaped yeast-like cells that taper toward the end, forming an anilid. So, parang anilid siya or group of cells. So, that's the hortarinic. Then, na may causes, it causes class is your tinia nigra or so known as your tinia nigra palmaris. From the prefix palm, this one would affect hands class. Tinia nigra or tinia nigra palmaris is a superficial and chronic and asymptomatic infection of the stratum corneum caused by the rheumatiaceous fungi, hertea wernicki or exopiala wernicki. The lesions would appear as dark, brown to black discoloration, often on the palm class. So, sa kamay siya. Yeah. So, there is a darkness. That's your tinia nigra. Or tinia nigra palmaris. Now let's go to the third one. Sorry for this. This is the third one. Pedrea horte. For Pedrea horte class, they would appear as short, dark hyphae containing thick-walled resting cells. They have an ascomata that would consist of irregularly shaped pseudotisha that are black in color. Each ascoma would contain an, a, a single ascus containing an ascospore. So, ito yung ascus nyo class, di ba? If you still remember sa intro to Mycoviro. This is the ascus. Inside the ascus class, you would find different ascospores at a, at a minimum of at least 8 ascospores. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, that's your Pedrea heart. It's uh, it has a it has a ascus with ascospores. It is known to cause your black piedra. Now bla black piedra class is a nodular infection of the hair shaft. So sa buhok siya class. Do take note of that. The hair shaft is the one being affected. Then another one of the fourth one. So, Trichosporon species. So under Trichosporon species, we have your Trichosporon cutaneum, Trichosporon bijelli, and Trichosporon asahi. Now they would produce pleomorphic yeast cells measuring 3 to 8 micrometer in diameter with a septate hypae and artrochonidia, either of which can predominate. The organism can readily be confused with candida. So, this is the appearance of your trichosporin class. So, they are pleomorphic. When you say pleomorphic, they have varying they have varying shapes. And take note of the uh, take note of the septated hyphae. So, there is a septation and they are, will produce an artrochodidia. And you could easily mistake this class for candida. It is known to cause your white Piedra. White piedra class would produce a light brown soft nodule on the beard or the mustache. Take note of that. Then, cutaneous mycosis are caused by fungi that would infect only the keratinized tissues, especially the skin, hair, and nails. So, we're done with the superficial class. The one would affect the epidermis. Now, this time, let's go to the cutaneous one. The thing you need to remember about cutaneous mycosis is that they would affect the keratinized tissues. Any type of tissue that has keratin in it, especially the skin, the hair, and the nails. Now, the most important of these dermatophytes are a group of 40 related fungi that belong to three genera, microsporum, trichophyton, and epidermophyton. So those are the three genera that you need to remember class that are related to cutaneous mycosis. Microsporum, trichopython, and epidermophyton. Now, pathogenesis class, they would usually uh, begin when you come in contact with an infected skin, especially if there are minor breaks in the skin integrity. An example of this class, uh, for those who are athletes, if you're an athlete class, there are times where in your skin, 
your skin and your foot would be dry or there would be sometimes cracks because of the too much dryness of wearing of, of prolonged use of socks or prolonged use of shoes. Like the dry yung skin, the skin would dry. And that there, there is a possibility for this type of fungal infection to break through the skin layer. Detached hair and skin cells con skin scales containing dermatophytes can remain infectious for months in the environment. Once the stratum corneum is penetrated, the organism can proliferate in the keratinized layer of the skin with a variety of proteinases helping to establish infection. So itong proteinase niya class, this is an enzyme. Remember your fungi are chemotropic, they secrete enzyme. This is an en enzyme class that would degrade protein, allowing your fungi to establish infection sa keratin layer niyo. Now, proteinase is one of the enzymes produced by the fungi. The protein will break down or cleave proteins. Most dermatophyte infections are self-limited, spontaneously resolving with time. Let's talk about their clinical manifestations class. So, they could range from inapparent colonization. When you say inapparent colonization class, it is not usually, not usually detected. Up to the chronic progressive eruptions. So it could spread class. It could spread the, and that would that may last for months of year or years, causing considerable discomfort and disfiguration. Now, dermatologists would if often give each infection its own disease name based on the Latin name for the anatomic site. So, yung name class, the name of the mycosis is often based on where, uh, where the infection occurred or what anatomic site did the infection affect. For example, class, we have your tinea capitis. Capitis class, prefix cap refers to the scalp. Tinia pedis, from the word pedis, familiar kayo, paaklas or the feet. It would usually affect the feet. Manum, for the hands. Cruris, for the groin. Barbe, for the beard or hair. And ungium, for the nails and bed, for the nail beds. So that's how they uh, decided on the name of the cutaneous mycosis. They base it on the anatomic site. Let's talk about the first one class, your tinea pedis or athlete's foot. Athlete's foot class or tinea pedis is caused by trichophyton rubrum, epidermophyton flocosum, trichophyton mentagophytes. These are microspores as small and globus arranged in grape-like clusters. So this is the appearance class of your trichophyton mentagophytes. Bites. Take note of the microspores that are small and globus. And they are usually arranged class. Please take note of the grape-like cluster. Di ba sa bacteria class, si S. aureus yung grape-like. Sa punjay naman, si trichopython mentagrophytes. Now, tinea pedis is the most prevalent of all dermatophytosis. It usually occurs as a cro in chronic infection of the toe webs. Pag sinabi mong toe webs, class yung space. The space between the toes. This is the space between the toes. Initially, class, this is characterized or it would usually start with itching. Followed by an itching class, it would produce a vesicle that would rupture and it would discharge a thin fluid. So, para kang nagkaroon ng paltos class sa Tagalog. If you're familiar with paltos, di ba kapag nagkapaltos ka sa paa, magkakaroon ng tubig yung, yung skin niya. So, it begins like that. Now, the skin of the toe web would become macerated. So, mawawasak siya, class, masisira siya, or madidiktik siya until it would peel up. Whereupon, after peeling, class, it would now become, or it would now be prone to develop secondary bacterial infection. When the fungal infection becomes chronic, peeling and cracking of the skin 
are the principal manifestations accompanied by pain and pruritus. Pruritus is itching. So, pag sobrang lalaklas, if you have a very chronic and severe type of athlete's foot, this is go what's going to happen to your feet. There is feeling, peeling, cracking, pain, and pruritus or constant itching. Let's go to your tinea ungium, or also known as your onychomycosis. This is caused by trichophyton mentagrophytes, trichophyton rubrum, and epidermophyton flocosum. This is a nail infection class that we follow prolonged tinea pedis. Why? Uh, remember class, if you have tinea pedis, as mentioned earlier, you would have itching or pruritus. And when you scratch the feet, you scratch the feet or the pruritus, there's a possibility that if you have very long nails, the nail part could get infected. Kasi ginamit mo yung kamay mo pang kamot, you could spread the disease. So with high fall invasion, the nails would become yellow, brittle, thickened, and crumbly. One or more nails of the feet or hand may be involved. So this is a secondary infection class of tinea pedis. So take note of the nails. It's characterized as yellow, brittle, and thickened, makapal, and crumbly. So, kadiri, di ba? Then, we have your tinea corporis. Tinea corporis class is also known sa Tagalog as your buni. Yung, yung ano, di ba? Buni ad had had alipunga. So, tinea corporis is known as buni class. This is caused by trichophyton rubrum. Trichophyton rubrum class is with tear-shaped microcodidia laterally on hyphae. So, these are the microconidia class. They are laterally found on the hyphae. Now, this is a superficial fungal infection that would affect any part of the body, excluding the hands, feet, scalp, face, beard, and groin, and nails. So, lahat ng part ng body nyo class except dun sa mga nabanggit. Hands, feet, scalp, face, beard, groin, and nails. It is commonly called a ringworm class. So, buni, sa Tagalog, is also known as a ringworm infection. It is characterized by a ring-shaped lesion. So, if you see your partner having this type of skin infection class, most likely meron siyang buni or a ringworm infection. And he, needs, he or she needs to visit a dermatologist. Then we have your tinea cruris or jock itch or had had. So to give you an idea class on the etiology of the name, the, the word jock. This is a US, a, a, an American word used to describe football, football players, mga jocks, mga, uh, aside from football players class, yung mga naglalaro ng hockey and so on. So, the, the thing about football players and hockey players is that they would wear a a type of, uh, what's the correct word? They wear a type of vest or protective, protective layer in their groin part sa 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 pubic area nila class sa singit. Now, what happens is that during practices, during practices, during games, they would sweat a lot. And ang nangyayari, yung sweat class, they would, uh, they would fill up the protective layer in their groin region. And that's the one that would cause the jock itch. Pawis na pawis yung mga football player, yung hockey player, to the point class na napupuno dun sa singit na part nila. And that causes the jock itch or the hadad. Kaya siya tinawag na jock itch is very common among football players, hockey players. Because of what they wear and because of the where the sweat goes. Naiipon doon sa singit nila or sa groin area. In Tagalog class, this is known as your hadad. This is caused by epidermophyton flocosum, produces only macrocodinia, smooth-walled 
two to four cells. So this is your macroconidia. Take note of how smooth yung cell wall niya class. And it is two to four cells. So one, two, three, four. Now this is ringworm of the groin class. So there are red patches on the groin and even affecting the scrotum class. So sobrang katinyan. Uh, it's very itchy and ano siya class, it, it affects a lot of uh, individuals that are athletes. It's commonly called ringworm as it presents a ring-shaped lesion. Then we have your tinea manum. This is caused by trichophyton rubrum followed by trichophyton mentagophytes, epidermophyton flocosum. This is ringworm of the hands, palms, and between fingers. And again, associated siya with tinea pedis. So, it could spread class from, from the nails, from the feet, and even reach the hands class. Then we have your tinea cap capitis. This is caused by microsporum canis. Now, the characteristic of microsporum canis class is that this is a macroconidia that is thick walled, produces a spindle shape, large, multi septated, rough walled with curved tips and knobby projection. So, if you take a look at the appearance class of the conidia, this is a macroconidia, spindle shape siya class. Spindle shape siya, multi-septated, rough walled, and has a curvy tip. Curvy, curvy yung tip niya tinamang, pa-curve. With a knobby projection, parang knob yung projection niya, patusok. So that's your microsporum canis. Then another one is microspo, a trichophyton tonsurans. This is the most common, second most common cause. It is known to produce abundant microconidia with a characteristic tear club or balloon shape. So, pag tinignan nyo yung itsura siya ng microconidia niya class, it looks like a tear. It looks like a balloon in appearance. So, those are the two organisms or two fungi known to cause your capitis. Microsporum canis and trichopyton tonsurans. Infection of the hair and scalp begins with an erythematous papule around the hair shop, which progresses to scaling of the scalp and discoloration or fracture of the of the shop. can spread to adjacent hair follicles and progresses in a ring-like fashion, leaving behind broken, discolored hairs and sometimes black dots where the hair is absent but the infection has invaded the follicle. So this is the appearance class of someone with tinea capitis. There is a ringworm or a ring shape loss of hair. Para kang napapanop class. But in reality, this is a case wherein your follicles are already being invaded by fungi. Then another one is your tinea barbe. Now tinea barbe class is caused by trichophyton mentagrophytes variant granulosum. Trichophyton verocosum also. This is the ringworm of the beard and mustache. So, ayan yung itsura niya, class. Now, how would you diagnose, class, the... How would you diagnose the, the different dermatophytes, class? So, you could use the following techniques. LPCB, hair baiting technique, and wood slump. So, in LPCB, class, this is their appearance. So, here we have your microsporum on the middle is your trichophyton and on the right is your epidermophyton so they are usually using very basic uh, lab diagnostic diagnostic techniques class lpcb air baiting and wood slab now, hair baiting technique class, so you're already familiar with this. So, this is used class for differentiating mentagropites from broom broom. So, there would be V-shaped penetration of the hair shop. And this is usually seen in infections causes, caused by T mentagropites. So, here there would be the penetration of the hair shop. So, ito yung hair shop nyo class. This is the entire hair shop. When you do the hair baiting technique, the stain would penetrate the hair shop. 
Then we have your wood slab class. So some species of dermatophytes would fluoresce when exposed to UV light. So ito. Imagine class ito yung ulo mo when it passes through UV light. The, the fungi or the dermatophyte would fluoresce. Kadiri, di ba? So what are the treatments class? So treatments class would include, in, in some cases, local infections would resolve on their own. If, if you have a very strong immune system, it would resolve on their own. But if it does not resolve class, you could use topical antifungal such as terbinafin or assholes. Examples of assholes class are miconazole and ketoconazole. So these are antifungals. Then more extensive skin infections, especially those involving the scalp, would require systemic therapy class. When you say systemic therapy, you need to take the antifungal orally wherein your entire body would be affected. In this case, you would have to take griseofulvin, itraconazole, or oral terbenafin. So, hindi na enough class. The topical antifungals are not enough in uh, extensive in the extensive skin infection. So you need to take oral antifungals. Nail infections are especially difficult to cure, likely due to the slow turnover of the infected nail and poor penetration of antifungal agents. So remember that class. Very difficult to treat a nail fungal infection because of the slow turnover of the infected nail. Hindi ka makakakuha kagad ng uh, new, new nail to remove the infected. And aside from that, there would be poor penetration of antifungal. Now, therapy for nail infection must be continued over weeks class to months. So, ganong katagal. And the sad part is that relapses when may occur. So, when you say relapses, uh, let's say you got treated already, there's a high possibility that it would return. Then, keratolytic agents such as your Whitfield's ointment class may be useful for reducing the size of hyperkeratotic lesions. Dermatophyte infections can usually be prevented simply by observing general hygiene measures. No specific preventive measures such as vaccines would exist. So you can easily avoid this dermatophyte infections class by maintaining proper hygiene. Uh, sa US kasi class, hindi uso yung naliligo sa kanila. Ang suggestion ko sa inyo, do not do not, uh, do not reuse for the meals para sa mga lalaki. Do not reuse your underwear. Avoid, avoid not taking pats. So as much as possible, class maligo once a day. And observe proper hygiene by using the right amount of soap when taking a bath. So that ends the discussion. So these are the uh, references. Plus. Yung Mahon, yung Baileys, and yung Henry's. So I hope you were able to learn something. Thank you.